everybody, welcome back to the shop. So a couple of months ago, um, on Facebook Marketplace, somebody had listed this sandblast cabinet for $40, and so I snapped it up pretty quick, mainly because I knew I was going to need one. Um, also, the price, obviously, was pretty good, and it was local, so it was very convenient for me to swing by and pick it up. Um, upon further inspection, it turned out that the sandblast cabinet was going to need a lot of work. Again, for the price, I think I still got a good deal because, you know, everything on this cabinet is replaceable. And really, the, the main investment is the cabinet itself, which is in good condition. So I figured today what I'll do is I'm going to uh, kind of refurbish this cabinet, uh, get it back to the shape it should be in, and then also add some upgrades to maybe help it uh, perform even better than the way it was originally designed. So if this type of thing interests you, stick around and uh, we'll get started right away. Okay, let's uh, first take a look and see what I got for my $40. Um, at first glance, everything looks pretty decent. Maybe a small dent in the shelf, which really doesn't affect anything. The sight glass is pretty well etched and unusable. And the seller already let me know about the gloves, that they were destroyed, so that was no surprise there. What did surprise me was the fact that the gun had no trigger and uh, looks to be pretty much, you know, it's, it's done for. So that's fine. Like I said, all these parts are replaceable. There's a look at the torn up gloves. Uh, looks like he used glass bead in this blaster. And uh, so let me show you what I plan to add to this sandblaster to kind of make it work for what I need it to do. Most of these upgrades, um, there's already uh, YouTube videos about them. Um, every single one of these things. This is basically where I learned how to do most of these upgrades. So if you've already been doing your search about sandblast cabinet upgrades, you uh, will recognize a lot of these. <clears throat> so first off, I've got a bunch of electrical components and a couple of replacement light fixtures because that's basically the first thing you do to all these Harbor Freight sandblasting cabinets is replace the lighting. Uh, so I put, I'm bringing in these outdoor light fixtures and I'll have some really bright floodlights in there to really make the uh, work area easy to see. I'm going to replace the the sight glass bezel hardware with some longer hardware and thumb screws so it's easier to get that bezel on and off to do changes on the sight glass. I have a new piece of glass it's actually behind me over there on the parts washer um, and then I'm going to protect that glass I'm going to try to with some of these heavy duty screen protectors. Uh, I just figured I'd give that a try uh, because there's a commercial product out there that's like pre-taped, you know, it has adhesive already attached to it and everything. And that's all well and good, but you get five of those for $15, or, or I can get 25 of these for like five bucks. So I'm going to try to use these to protect the glass from etching after I install the new glass. Got myself a new gun with tips. Um, what else? New sandblasting gloves. I'm going to add a cyclone to the dust collection on this, so that should help a lot. Um, it should help separate out the particles so I don't clog my filter. I have this really short, full. it's a full size shop vac, but it's really short and it, everything should be able to fit in a column right here on the side. And I'm going to tie in the shop vac power with power switch with the light switch on the sandblasting cabinet so everything turns on with the flip of one switch. I'm sure that uh, I've got a couple buckets for the dust collector as well. I'm sure I've forgotten some things. I'm going to caulk all the joints. Oh, and I'm also going to reconfigure um, the siphon for the sand uptake. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that uptake hose and I'm going to use a, uh, a siphoning sy system at the bottom of the cabinet. So. I'm going to go through each one of these step by step. I'm probably not going to uh, talk too much about them because like I said, if you want 
detailed instructions on any of these upgrades, you can find them easily on YouTube. So step one is I'm going to take apart, partially take apart this sandblaster so I can get in there and caulk all the joints. I'm going to have to go through the manual just to make sure that this was assembled correctly. It's a little on the beat up side, but nothing a little sealant can't fix. I'm going to have to, I got to clean all this up, empty the hopper, uh, and then I'll seal every single one of these joints here in the hopper. And then I'll come over here and do the same thing. Clean all the inside of that up and then seal with uh, with some caulk every single joint there. And then when I marry the two halves together once again, I'll lay it all down on a bead of caulk as well. What I'm using, if I can find it, I've set everything off to the side here. There we go. I'm just using some clear DAP Alex Plus. It's acrylic latex with silicone. The main reason I bought it is it was cheap and it was clear, so just about anything will do. I know that if you use 100% silicone, it can be tacky. I wanted something that dried a little on the harder side, so I'm hoping that'll do it. So the next step is cleaning out this whole section and, and seaming, sealing all the seams. Let's see if I can catch most of this. Mm, about half. I just gotta clean that up now because I'm trying to, I wanna have as few ridges as possible to allow the sand to flow freely down into the bottom of the hopper. So anytime you have like a ridge or a bump, it slows that sand down and I don't want it, especially any pockets where the sand can accumulate. Brushing it on like seam sealer. It's a little bit easier since it doesn't have to look good. I'm going around all these nuts and bolts and everything, it's just a lot easier this way. I'm trying to figure out the best order to do things, and I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to build the whole funnel assembly and kind of glue it all together so it's ready to just marry up to the upper portion all in one piece without me having to fiddle around with trying to glue everything together while I'm trying to marry the two pieces together. Every single one of these holes is just completely torqued, you know, like they 
tighten the screws down too much. The holes are definitely too big for the screws provided. And that's the case for the whole thing. Um, and I think that's partly why all these holes are blown out. Blown out. I'm going to try to I'm going to use my Craig clamp and try to flatten them a little bit before I get to work here. My Craig clamp has two flat faces on it. It should be able to hopefully kind of pinch everything and flatten it all out. Okay, the next step is I'm going to apply a bead of caulk around the rim of the funnel, add this ring, and then I'm going to add a bead on top of the ring and add this support grate. And then I will use a bunch of spring clamps to clamp it all together. Okay, while everything's drying, I'm going to work on the siphon system for this unit. Like I said before, this isn't a tutorial. There's so many other people on YouTube that do a better job explaining this, but I'm just going to show you how I'm going to make mine. Um, this is all going to be attached to the trap door at the bottom of the funnel. And it all starts with uh, this T right here. Okay, the T will have a nipple that passes through the trap door, and I'm just going to cut off the end of this adapter piece of PVC to use as a lock nut on the other side of the trap door. There will be a plug um, that will, you know, be put in the bottom of the T here to keep the media from coming out, and I can remove the plug when I'm ready to drain the media. And then I have a nipple here. That will go to a reducer, like so. And then at the end of the reducer is going to be the half inch hose barb. And in order to allow air to be pulled in with the media, because without air the media won't move, I'm going to make my own metering valve out of this piece of uh, brass pipe here. It's going to be attached to the top of the this nipple here. And then I'm going to drill a couple holes in the body of the pipe and use this bolt to um, adjust, micro adjust the amount of air that actually comes in to the system. So I'm going to go ahead and build this and um, install it in the trap door and then uh, once all that's done hopefully everything will be dry enough for me to uh, start assembling the whole cabinet. It's about 100% humidity today, and it's blazing hot, so I'm not sure how long it'll take for this to dry. I'll probably put a fan on it to help it dry quicker. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but it'll work. It's basically like a needle valve. You use the screw to block off, you know, the surface area and only allow in the amount of air that you need.
right, here it is in a nutshell. This is gonna, I'm gonna tighten everything up in the vise, but this will be eventually at least be pour, pointing horizontally, maybe a little bit more vertical. Um, but this will be sitting at the bottom. This will be sitting at the bottom of the funnel like this. The air comes in through the meteoring valve. The sand is already all above here, and so the air will pull the sand through this nozzle here and up into the gun. Got a little overzealous there and installed this without filming it, but it's pretty straightforward. Here, you can see that plastic piece of pipe. I just screwed it down uh, kind of as a backing nut, and it is what locks the whole assembly to this door. I don't know if I can do this one handed. And so there it is, and there's my metering valve. That's the tube that's going to go through the shelf and then through the hopper. And here's the plug. So if I want to empty my media, I can empty it here, um, or I can empty it just by dumping open this whole door right here. Either way. attempt to join the bottom half and the top half together. I'm going to start out by running a bead of caulk around the perimeter here of the bottom half and then we'll see if we can't get them to come together. Maybe now would be a good time to do a little bit of hammer and dolly work right here. Try to fix this bend in this shelf. Well, not perfect, but better. Like all the screws um, that will air in this, the previous owner or whoever assembled this did it backwards. And so, if I can get this to focus, I can show you. Um, it's supposed to have a washer behind the screw head, and then the nut is a, a, like a knurled flange nut, and it's, it kind of has like a locking action. 
but they put the washer on the nut side and so that's kind of why you know everything is loose and uh, so I figure while I'm at it I might as well um, swap these around the way they're supposed to be. The interesting thing is whoever put the case together did it the right way and put the washers behind the screw heads. So maybe this has been a part a couple of times before and uh, that would probably explain why it was assembled wrong. I guess gloves are next. Tempted to pull the rings out, attach the gloves, and then put them back in. But there's six bolts on each ring, and I think it'd be just as much work in, as doing it this way. Just all, I don't see my arms, but tight fit in here. Basically, I, I attached the ring on the, on the farthest edge, or I attached the clamp on the farthest edge of the ring, and then I pushed it back once I got it started. Should give me the tightest fit. Gotta do that with the other one. Alright, next I'm going to mount two of these exterior grade light fixtures inside the cabinet. I will have these boxes on the exterior of the cabinet. They will be connected to each other with a piece of conduit. There will be a switch on this one, and when the switch will control the lights. So when I turn on the lights, the vacuum automatically turns on. So I finished wiring the main power cord to the switch. Obviously, I've got um, you know an open hole here. I got a little, a little too overzealous about knocking holes out. So I can plug that. That's not a problem. Here's my switch. The other end, I'm gonna wait. Um, all I've got to wire up here is the light, and then also the. Uh, shop vac, but I don't want to do that yet just because I am still got to move This thing around and I don't want to drag the shop vac around with me every time I move it so the The wiring of the shop vac side is probably going to be one of the last things I do before I put this guy in service I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to work on the glass I Have some weather stripping. I'm going to seal the opening with weather stripping and then I'm going to put the glass on and at that point I need to determine whether I want to use the old broken plastic bezel that goes around here or if I need to make a new one. Uh, you know, I just so happen to have a fully kitted out woodworking shop over here even though everything is kind of put away. But I have some wood. I think I could use a nice three quarter inch piece of plywood and create the same type of bezel. Um, so I have to figure that out, but in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and do some weather stripping on this.
Okay, at this point, I want to test fit the glass and then kind of see where the overhang lies. Hopefully, I don't know if this is actually going to happen. I don't think it is, but I'd like it for the glass to not overhang on this side of the weather stripping. But just by looking at the wear line from the previous glass, I think that maybe I'm out of luck here. But uh, it doesn't affect anything. I'll still be able to do what I want to do with this. Right, it is a perfect fit. That's great. So since this bezel, what the bezel does is it, it just holds, it clamps everything down and holds the glass up against the weather stripping. But since this one is broken right here, you see, I'm gonna go ahead, I have, we have the technology. I'm gonna make uh, a new one out of wood. Um, it's not going to be too terribly difficult. It's going to require me to cut the piece out of plywood and then somehow get a bevel, uh, not a bevel, but a, um, what do you call it, a rabbit inside here. Um, and so I got to do some, I'm going to do some measuring, do some math, and uh, then when we come back I'll probably have it all figured out by then. Alright, I went ahead and I used some PEX tubing to attach the suction line, the siphon line, whatever you want to call it, to my uh, metering valve. It actually goes up and I've got it going through the shelf and then up into the cabinet. And I have both the air hose here and the siphon hose really close together and I've already hooked up my new gun got the grating in and I went a little overboard on the new frame which I'm known to do sometimes um, I made I had some oak plywood and I made it out of oak plywood but then I didn't want to see the the plywood edges and so I made some plywood edge banding and then I still had to figure out you know the rabbit on the inside and everything and so I did that and then after I made everything there was some you know voids and it's plywood it's not perfect so I've got the wood filler in here and right before I sand off the wood filler and round over the edges I've got the cover set up in place and I'm going to on the inside of the cabinet, I'm I'm going to mark from underneath all the hole locations, and then I'm going to countersink and drill the holes. And uh, I'll show you at that point what I uh, plan on doing with the bolts, because I want to make the bolts easier to I, I want to make this cover easier to get on and off, so I can change out the protective film on this glass. Uh, more easily so I'll show you guys that in just a second all right while the finish on that frame is drying I went ahead and installed the studs that I'm going to use for the I guess you can call it a quick release quicker release um, system for the frame let me show you how I'm going to prepare the glass okay so I bought some of these uh, heavy-duty page protectors they usually have like a three ring on it and I just cut the, the thing off that attaches it to a binder. I'm going to lay them out and then I'll probably just use a piece of black tape to join them in the middle and then use painter's tape to join it around the edges. All right, my glass is ready to go. Um, in the meantime, I also finished up the wiring here. I wired the vacuum cleaner to the vacuum, the shop vac, to the whole unit. So when I turn on the lights, it turns on the vacuum. The vacuum isn't on right now, but here's, I've got the, wire, the lights installed. So that's how that looks. 
nice and bright in there. So I can go ahead and turn on the shop vac. And so now when I turn on the switch, So, making progress. Really, the, the last, the, the only thing that's left now is I gotta mount the cyclone and the bucket above the shop vac, and I just haven't really decided what I want to do here. I'm I'm trying not to make it turn into a big like a project unto itself the way I kind of did with the uh, frame that still has a finish that is drying over here. Turning out nice though, but um, I don't know what else I can do. I'm, I just really want to make a, a bracket to set the bucket on because the cyclone actually fits right on here and it hangs from here. So then the cyclone attaches to the top of the bucket and I just need something to set the bucket on. So And I got to figure out where that all lines up vertically on this unit. All right, here is the finished product. I'm pretty excited. I'm ready to get using this thing. Um, I think it turned out really, really good. Um, as you can see, got the bezel in place. I am missing one of the knurled, whatever, finger screws or whatever you call them. Everything's buttoned up on the electrical side. I've got the cyclone hooked up to a bucket and the small dust collector is down there. Um, this, uh, whatever this is, this little system, it's pretty rudimentary. It's just there to hold it in place and not let it fall out. Um, you know, it's not actually securing it or anything. But it makes it so when I'm ready to empty this bucket, all I got to do is grab this, pop it out, and then that's just like a little shelf for it to sit on. Nothing fancy. The reason I did that was because th that allows me to change the bucket if I need to, or whatever the case may be. It's not that big of a deal. So this is what happens when I turn it on. And there's some serious suction there. Um, I closed the intake. There's an intake in the back of the cabinet that lets the air in. And I closed the intake and it sucked the whole top down. I was afraid I was going to break the glass. It also inflated, it inflated the gloves. So that was pretty funny. So um, I think I've got it sealed up pretty good. That was just a real quick test to see. So the uh, next footage you'll see is just me using this for the first time, and it's my first time ever using a sandblaster, so please be gentle in the comments.